It's okay, you can admit it, we all have those games that we're too embarrassed to play in front of other people, and today I'm going to reveal my top 10 guilty pleasure video games, Retro Edition. Let's get started. What's up guys, if this is your first time here at the channel, my name is Tyler, and if you love gaming from all generations like we do here at G3, then consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. Number 10 on my list is the surprisingly fun NES game, The Little Mermaid. Now before you start judging me, remember this game was developed by Capcom. You know, the same team that brought us Bionic Commando, 1942, DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, and most importantly, the Mega Man series. The Little Mermaid is a single player side scroller where you take control of Ariel to guide her on her quest to of course take down the evil sea witch Ursula. Pathetic. I didn't have this game growing up, but my daughter and fellow G3 member Emma is absolutely obsessed with Ariel and Ursula. We saw this at a retro store last year and she just had to buy it. She had me play it with her and it really didn't take long for me to be enjoying it just as much as she was. You can shoot bubbles at your enemies to trap and throw them, and enjoy some fun boss fights where you ultimately find your way to Ursula. Ursula's game sprite looks great, and the cutscenes are fun, but it's definitely not a game you're going to brag about to your friends that you can beat. Number 9 is Beavis and Butthead on the Sega Genesis. This game was released back in 1994 and it's based on the animated MTV series. You can control both Beavis and Butthead and help these lovable losers find the missing pieces of their torn up Guar concert tickets. The pieces are scattered all over town and you have to visit all the common settings from the TV show like Beavis and Butthead's house, the hospital, Highland High School, the mall, and even Burger World. The animation looks great and the developers totally capture the essence of the show. The puzzles you have to complete in order to collect all the ticket pieces are challenging and completely hilarious at times, like dipping the rat in the french fry grease before serving it to a jerk customer and trying to escape Billy Bob in the hospital. Of course the game wouldn't be complete if your primary weapons weren't burping and farting. This game is amazing, but you didn't hear that from me. Now one of the ultimate guilty pleasures of the 80s and 90s has got to be pro wrestling. The gimmicks were so over the top, but I was one of those kids that went absolutely insane over it. That's why number 8 on my list is the Nintendo 64 classic WCW vs NWO World Tour. This was released back in 1997 and was right in the middle of the Monday Night Wars of WCW and the WWE. Now I owned and played other wrestling titles on the NES, but none of them really captured what I saw on TV. This was the first game I remember thinking that this is wrestling. The grappling and aerial mechanics are easy to manage, you have a great list of popular WCW and NWO characters, and you have some great unlockable characters like Diamond Dallas Page and the Macho Man Randy Savage. Cup of coffee in the big time. But the best part for me was that you could actually perform the famous signature finishing moves, even though the graphics don't really hold up that well today. Holy Polygon's Batman! Number 7 is a very obscure title from the Atari 2600 called Pigs in Space starring Miss Piggy. I bought this game for I think $1 at a Big Lots store well after the 2600's heyday because another guilty of pleasure of mine growing up was the Muppet Babies TV show. I don't know why, but I believe I have logged more time in this Atari game than any other that I own. The game basically consists of three mini games, with the first being Chicken Invaders. Of course, this is just the standard Space Invaders clone, but it was just more fun to try to hit Gonzo at the top of the screen instead of some random spaceship. The second game is called Posteroids, where Miss Piggy was accidentally ejected into space and she has to make her way back to the ship while avoiding Posteroids and Noodles. Oh, seriously, I'm getting embarrassed trying to legitimately explain this game. I just realize how ridiculous it sounds. Thankfully, the third and final game is Escape from the Planet of the Gonzoids. Basically, you're navigating a ship through an abandoned pizza mine. Yes, I said pizza mine. The shooting mechanic is strange, but for whatever reason I enjoy it. Apparently, I wasn't the only person who enjoyed this game because a second Atari Muppets game was planned called Miss Piggy's Wedding, but it ultimately was cancelled. But the real sad thing is that I would have probably bought it. Number 6 is one of those games that I felt my report card money was going to burn a hole in my pocket and I just had to buy something that day, but it ended up being one of my favorite Sega Genesis titles of all time. And that game is Tasmania. This game was released back in 1992 and is a 2D platformer where you control Taz on his journey to find a legendary giant bird in the Lost Valley so he can find some giant eggs to help feed his family. 
the animation is great and Taz can eat almost every item he comes in contact with. And it's really fun to see how he reacts, like being able to breathe fire after eating a giant chili pepper. Of course, Taz can spin like a tornado at any time to help speed his way through a level or blast through some enemies and even help you jump a little further. But this game was out around the same time as Mortal Kombat, so it's not like I'm going to bring up this game talking to my friends at school, so I just kept this gem to myself. I'm finally going to talk about a Dreamcast game here on the channel, and I'm really shocked this is the first time actually, but number 5 on the list is Virtua Tennis. This game was released in 2000 and is a port of the original arcade title. This game just has it all for a sports title. Of course you can do your standard exhibition match, but the world circuit is where this game really shines. You choose your player and start out as the 300th ranked tennis player in the world and travel the globe competing in tournaments to better your ranking and complete addictive and fun exercise and skill games in order to progress your skills. I mean, who would have ever thought mixing bowling and tennis would be great, but it's one of my favorite mini games in virtual tennis. The actual tennis gameplay is challenging as well. This isn't the same level of forgiveness in playing a game like Mario Tennis. I mean, in this game, you need to accurately time and approach your shots if you want to make it to number one in the world. I think most people would agree this game's great, but I grew up in southern West Virginia and was a baseball player, so playing and talking about tennis really wasn't a popular thing to do, so I really think I was the only person playing this game, and I pretty much kept it to myself. Number four is one of those NES titles that I got back in 1990 and I never told any of my friends. And that was Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. I mean for real, a middle school age boy admittedly buying and playing a game with Cinderella's castle on the cover isn't going to win you any points at school. But I've always been a Disney fanatic and I didn't want to pass it up. You're basically a kid going through the Magic Kingdom at Disney World collecting six silver keys needed to open Cinderella's castle so Mickey can start his parade. You can enter your name when the game starts and I'm just going to be honest and name myself Ashamed. Wow, it's amazing how well this name fits. As an adult, I have absolutely no shame in saying that I still love this game. You get to visit Space Mountain, Autopia, Big Thunder Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean, and of course the Haunted Mansion. And you get to find one key by talking to kids throughout the park answering Disney trivia. And don't forget, this one's made by Capcom also, so don't miss out on this one. Seeing how much I hate Tetris and Dr. Mario, I can't believe that number 3 on my list is the Nintendo 64 puzzle game, Pokemon Puzzle League. This game came out when I was in college, and it's a pretty straightforward puzzle game that you need to clear blocks in rows of 3 or more, and the row of blocks is continuously rising up throughout the game, and if it reaches the top of the screen, then you lose. What makes this game so great is the 2 player versus mode. My wife and I were dating at the time, and we may or may not have skipped some college classes cause we were having some puzzle league tournaments. But I'm gonna warn you, this game may destroy friendships because it can get super competitive. Number two on my list is gonna cover one genre because of its short lifespan and notoriety. I feel like I'm about one of 10 people that actually enjoy the FMV or full motion video games on the Sega CD. This was a brief and failed fad in the early to mid 90s, but I was absolutely fascinated with these games. It's just like one of your favorite cheesy 80s or 90s movie that you had on VHS that you would watch over and over, but in this case you can actually have a say in how the movie plays out. Some of my greatest memories growing up are with these FMB games like Prize Fighter, Sewer Shark, Supreme Warrior, Dracula Unleashed, Sherlock Holmes, and my all-time favorite FMB game, Dragon's Lair. I recently even completed a full live playthrough of Dragon's Lair for its 35th anniversary a few weeks ago. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out when you finish the top 10. Alright, we're finally at my number one guilty pleasure game of all time. This game was early in the life of the Sega Genesis and I've never heard anyone talk about it at school because you would definitely get made fun of in the 90s if you were a kid who liked to listen to Michael Jackson. So Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is definitely a game I secretly rented at the video store. This game is based on the Michael Jackson movie of the same name and consists of you guiding the King of Pop through multiple stages while trying to save children. All of the children look identical by the way, I don't get what that's about. What's hilarious is all of your methods of attacking your enemies are based on Michael's dance moves. Say what you want about the gameplay, but his mannerisms and moves are pretty spot on here. You can even use some special magic to throw your hat to take down an enemy. One of the most bizarre parts of the game is that occasionally a shooting star will zoom by and if you catch it, you turn into a giant robot to take out all your enemies, but you can't save any children at that time. And once you save all the children, Michael's chimpanzee Bubbles comes out of nowhere and sits on your shoulders and guides you to the final boss. It's so weird. <laughs> 
The music is by far the best aspect of the game. Some of Jackson's best songs like Smooth Criminal, Bad, Beat It, and Billie Jean have some great 16-bit covers here. Now you always have to make sure you save enough energy for the end of each level so you can kill a wave of your enemies with your well choreographed dance moves. It's okay, you can admit it. You love this game too. Do you agree with my top 10? Let me know in the comments below. Also let me know what some of your gaming guilty pleasures are. Until next time guys, G3 out.